welcome back to PTC Grand Final with me, Eru. I'll be accompanying you as your caster. I'm with Benjamin Tan. Nice to meet you, everyone. Yeah, we will see that Matthew Sullivan will versus Hafiz Siddiq. Uh, Hafiz against uh, Matthew. Yeah. So both players are one of the top players in uh, Indonesia. If I'm not wrong, Hafiz did uh, manage to get into the final uh, in the previous Indonesia uh, tournaments. Uh, and Matthew is uh, no stranger to Southeast Asia tournaments. Uh, he did got uh, second place in one of Australia's regional back uh, about a couple of years ago. Uh, and I mean, he's a good friends with many top players in Southeast Asia as, as well. So, uh, not, not an opponent that you want to face uh, yeah. right in day two, and especially he's undefeated right now, going uh, X and zero from day one, and also winning his first round of day two. A really impressive performance here by Matthew. Yeah, both are very strong, and because now uh, Matthew is residing in Melbourne, he meet a lot of strong and famous opponents there. He actively in Australia circuit right now. Wow. Yeah, I'm really uh, curious uh, and interested to know what both players are running. If I'm not wrong, Matthew might be running the same team uh, from yesterday. Uh, he came up to me and he's telling me that, oh, I'm going to use the team that you won the Singapore mid-season with how to use it. So I'm like, oh, really? You're going to use it? It's so bad now. Don't use it. But uh, he did replace the Tapu Bulu with uh, an interesting Mega Heracross, uh, something you don't see every day in uh, tournaments. Uh, Although Mega Heracross uh, does have like uh, interesting knockouts against certain Pokemon, for example, uh, Cresselia uh, and even Tapu Fini with the Bullet Seed with, you know, Mega Heracross attacks that is really, really high. Yeah, Matthew is really good at predicting the opponent's uh, mind, so yeah, he's really strong opponent. It will be a tough game. I'm interested to see what will happen next. Yeah, so we'll move on to the, the team preview and look at what the both players are using. So, well, we are not ready yet, oh. but... Uh. Matthew is using the Incineroar, Heracross, Paragon 2, Metagross, Tapu Koko and Arakwani. Well, it's going to be the same team as he used yesterday and Harvest. Yeah. yeah, well, Harvest will use Tapu Finis, Salamence. Uh, Zapdos, Kartana, Incineroar, and uh, the last one? Komodo. Yeah, Komodo. So it looks like both players are actually using the same team they used uh, yesterday. Uh, perhaps uh, thinking that, oh, this, this team brought me to date, so it's still good. Uh, I'm not going to change it. Uh, maybe some minor adjustment in the moves, the item. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they have been scouting each other because they, are, they have both been featured on streams during uh, day one yesterday. So, uh, Matthew might be packing the, the same moves on Heracross, uh, Incineroar. Maybe he might be changing to like a pinch, uh, his pinch bag yesterday. So, maybe he's thinking like, oh, Assault Vest might be good. So, you never know what these players going to change their items or moves to. But, uh, Matthew packing two potential Megas on the team. As we have seen yesterday, he's using Mega Heracross and also Mega Metagross. Uh, he brought both of them to his stream games. Uh, uh, Hafiz is carrying the Mega Salamence, uh, as seen from yesterday as well. Also, Kamo'o and Tapofini is interesting because you, you don't see those two together every day. It's, uh, because the Z-move is uh, being reduced by the Misty Terrain. Uh, the, the Dragon damage has been halved. So We'll see how Hafiz can control his uh, combo O C move on this field. But it looks like we're gonna be hopping into the game. Yeah. Matthew versus Hafiz, everybody. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause both for both players. players. Ready? And now Hafiz Hidik sends Zapdos and Isenor to the field, while Matthew sends Isenor and Bodycon too. So Hafiz leading the Zap Cat, like uh, we, we like to call it. Uh, a really good duo in VGC 18 has been shown that it's a very good combo at the start of the season and also Matthew leading in Cinera Paragon 2 my favorite lead because the intimidate support helps Paragon 2 both to increase likely on the defense side uh, Hafiz can go for a fake out here but you never know if Matthew's yeah. Incinera fake out is faster so either you trade the fake out or 
uh, you go for the fake under is incinerate. I mean, both opponents, uh, both players did show uh, they are incinerate intimidate, but sometimes it can be a speed tie or uh, you're just faster than him. Yeah. So yeah. both players thinking whether should they trade fake out or switch out uh, into a Pokemon to play safe uh, because they don't really know who whose speed is faster. You know, even though yeah. your opponent's speed might come out first, it might be a speed tie. So half is switching out the Zapdos yeah, into Como O. Como O is a fighting type, super effective against both yeah. the Polygon 2 and, and Incineroar. The fake out into the Polygon 2 while it while Metus, uh, Incineroar uh, attacking the Como O. With the low kick, uh, not gonna do a lot of damage after the thanks to the half is Incineroar uh, Intimidate. Well, Como O looking really in a good position right now just to to use the Z of uh, the Kangaroo Soul Blaze. Uh, Matthew only safer switch in is the Tapu Koko, but he can't stop the Z move from going on here. So half is is definitely gonna get a Z move up. So Pargon 2 can choose to go for a Trick Room. So. Most of half is, uh, sorry, most of Matthew's Pokemon can still outspeed Como O in Trick Room despite the speed boost from the Kangaroo Snowblaze. Yeah, both players are taking their time to decide what move will they choose. And Matthew decided to take back the Incineroar and to switch out with uh, Tapu Koko. And there's the electric switch just activate on the field. Yeah, Tapu Koko coming in to at least block one Z move on Matthew's side, you know, not taking any damage with Tapu Koko. Uh, Polygon 2 is relatively bulky thanks to the Evil Light, so it's not going to take a lot of damage from this Z move, uh, yeah. despite being uh, one of, uh, I mean, Komo's strongest move. Yeah. So, the... The Glangelous of this. This might take a while. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing the animation where he tries to post Cool. And now jumping into the air, going to attack into Tapu Koko, but not really a big damage. Yeah, Tapu Koko is definitely immune to the dragon type uh, attack here. So safe switching for Matthew, Pargon 2, uh, might yeah. go for Trick Room here, might go for Ice Beam. And I mean, Ice Beam is usually safer because you still want your Tapu Koko to outspeed the Incineroar. Uh, to, you know, to Dazzling Gleam the next turn to yeah. pick up a KO on Como O without having yeah. the Incineroar to move first to you know, do big damage against you with the Flare Blitz. Yeah, I think uh, Matthew really uh, uh, did a good job on the first turn. He just Ice Beam the Como O and it's super effective. Yeah, uh, I'm actually quite surprised. He still do a lot of damage despite uh, being at plus one. So no critical hit right there. So uh, Matthew might actually invest quite a lot of special defense on the uh, pro, uh, I mean special attack sorry on the park on two uh, we see Como O and Tapu Koko go for a protect and right yeah, there Matthew Ma 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 making a good uh, relay predicting the Como O go for a protect uh, scouting out the flabbies from Incineroar yeah. and what a good read by Matthew park on two go for a trick room there yeah. making sure that uh, Como O will now underspeed the park on two and Ice Beam will definitely pick up the KO right there yeah Matthew uh, successfully set up the trick room. I think right now we can see that he's on the upper hand. Yeah, Matthew definitely is on the upper hand right now. What a good read there. Predicting the protect from Como O because Como O is usually afraid of the dazzling gleam. So Flav is onto Tapu Koko and protect on Como O is always safe. But Matthew make a level two read there. Reading the protect from Como O, protecting his own Tapu Koko and trick rooming to ensure that Progon 2 now will outspeed the Tapu uh, Como O the next turn and Ice Beam straight away to KO the Como O. And there's uh, Harvest decided to take back the Como and send out Kartana. Kartana, well, not known for his uh, and good special the defense. And there's Ice Beam into Incineroar, but only chip damage. And there's the knock off targeting into Tapu Koko. Trying to scout the item. Uh, yeah, Focus Focus Dash, Tapu Koko. Uh, actually, my favorite item on Tapu Koko. Oh. Right? <laughs> there's a Thunderbolt into this Incineroar. Not a lot of damage um, because you're not boosted by Life Orb or you don't. Um, well in this case, Matthew doesn't have the C move. So, Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain doing decent damage onto Incineroar. Uh, you never know if Incineroar is actually a South Vest or. Uh, the pinch berry because some players might opt for more special defense investment on the pinch berry in Cinderella, so it might look like a south vest right there. Katana switching in, 
from the uh, Como O slot. Um, looks like half is the one to set Como O that soon, but switching out uh, booster Como O really questions me. Like, uh, what can Como O do later without the the boost? Yeah, and now Tabu Coco decided to protect. Uh, While well, Porygon used Ice Beam into Kartana. Yeah. Not a lot of damage there. Uh, might be Assault Vest, um, which I assume it is. Uh, Half is doubling the Tabu Coco. Well, Matthew protect the Tabu Coco. Yeah. What a read. Matthew, are you a player or are you a god? Yeah. You are literally making good plays here. Uh, Matthew going X0 for a reason here. Yeah. Oh my god, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew is really good at predicting the opponent's movement. Incineroar coming in, a very, very good switch in to intimidate the Katana and also threaten the Katana with Flabbies and also intimidating yeah. the opposing Incineroar, which uh, both Pokemon can't really do any damage to. And there's probably going to use Recover to gain some health back. And it's, it's now it's restored to full. And yeah, we have seen the previous turn, uh, Katana actually went for a Sacred Sword onto Tapo Coco, uh, predicting that Matthew might switch the Incineroar back in. So maybe half is, yes, he did go for the same prediction as the previous turn, uh, trying to catch the Incineroar to switch in, you know, to do super effective damage against Incineroar. Uh, really well played there by half is. Yeah. So, right now in Cinderock, I can pressure both uh, Pokemon with a fake out, but usually you want to fake out a katana right there, which is uh, still threatening both your Porygon 2 and in Cinderock with a uh, with a sacred sword. But as you can see, katana uh, could be a salt vest, so he can't really protect uh, right yeah. there. So instead of faking out, you might want to try up go for a flab there to pick up a KO on katana. But Hafiz can always uh, catch that and switch it to a Como O, uh, you know, to stack it. Since Como O lost its uh, its boost, uh, it's actually basically useless and uh, have been taken a lot of damage from the Ice Beam yeah. from Pokemon, uh, Pokemon 2. And Hafiz decided to take back the Kartana and switch it into Zapdos, trying to save Kartana for later. And there's the Ice Beam into Zapdos! Uh, catching the switch, Ice Beam, a lot of damage. A critical Critic kill hit right there, activating the Pinch Berry. Uh, yeah. Might be actually be good for Hafiz there. I mean, I mean, without a crit, the uh, Ice Beam might not even proc the berry. So yeah. low kick from Incinero is going to pick yeah, up a KO on the uh, Hafiz Incinero right there. So a free switch in for Hafiz right at a time where Trick Room returns to normal. Where so off. maybe Hafiz can bring in the Como O here to, you know, uh, close combat if he has it or go for a Kangaroo Soul Blitz. But I feel like Katana is also a good switch in because you are uh, a South Vest. So you can always go for a Sacred Sword onto the Incinero and you know, yeah. if you have raw, you raw the Porygon 2 because Porygon 2 might go for a Trick Room here. It's not yeah. going to be good for all of three half his uh, Pokemon right there. As you can see, uh, Como O, Katana, Zapdos is yeah. really, really fast. And half is, uh, sorry, Matthew can always go for a Trick Room. Uh, we, we haven't seen the last Pokemon from uh, Matthew. It might be Heracross, it might be uh, Araquani. Both Pokemon is going to benefit on the Trick Room. Yeah, now Como is back on the field again. So, you think the Porygon 2 will use Trick Room again? Porygon 2 definitely wants to Trick Room right here, you know, uh, to to make Matthew's Pokemon outspeed. Uh, all three of Husky's Pokemon will be like really, really fast. The Zapdos, the Katana, the Como O. Uh, but Matthew is going to switch out the, yeah, for the, Tapu Coco. the Porygon 2 to Tapu Coco to, to take maybe like a Thunderbolt and a close combat from the uh, both Zapdos and yes. uh, Como O. A uh, really re good switch in there, uh -huh. uh, predicting the Thunderbolt onto it's the Tapu Coco. That's an unfortunate crit there. Yeah, so, oh my there. god, Matthew, stop Tabu being so good at this game. <laughs> Tapu Coco is a good game. Matthew making wow well plays, switching in Tapu Coco to you know, take both the Drain Punch and Thunderbolt. Not very effective for this flag. We pick up a KO. Oh, oh, oh no. It's Harvest is really in a pinch situation right now. And there's uh, oh, Incineroar in just snagging its berry. The yeah, the what a good play from Matthew right there, catching the switch in. And now Tapu Coco is gonna ask it both the Como O and the Katana. So if Matthew's gonna make another read predicting the Como O protect, he can also protect his Tapu Coco, you know, to waste a turn in the next turn, Dazzling Gleam. 
Uh, otherwise, he can fourth, go for a dazzling gleam here and flap it onto Katana. But Katana unintimidated. Sekro yeah. will still do a lot to uh, yeah. Incinera. Might even pick up a KO here. Komo does go for a protect. protect and I'll there's the dazzling gleam from Double Boko. Achieve the match into Katana. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't make the right uh, the right uh, read yeah. there. So. I mean, it's not over yet. Uh, Incineroar Flabbis will still pick up a KO on Katana here. And as you have seen, Matthew still have his Pogon 2 at a yeah. really good health. Uh, yeah. With Ice Beam still doing a lot of damage even to the booster Komo. And, and now that's the Flare Blitz picking up a KO into Katana. Yeah, and Komo doesn't have any stat boost because half his switch out Komo O in the previous turn. Uh, Pogon 2 is coming in here. You know, oh, oh actually yeah. the last Pokemon is Metagross. Metagross. Even better, Metagross is going to outspeed the Komo O uh, with an Ice Punch or Zen Hit, but should pick up a KO from, uh, against Komo O from this range. Uh, but as you can see, Matthew's timer is really low, yeah. so if Hafiz can manage to stall this 36 seconds, uh, he might still win. Yeah, and there's uh, Metagross ready to Mega Evolve. Uh, getting two more legs. Uh, after Mega uh, yes. Evolution, uh, Matthew go for Iron Hit. Yeah, it's it's enough to pick up a KO. So Matthew don't want to review his yeah. uh, move. Either he has Ice Punch or Sand Hit, but uh, he's like, oh, I don't need to remove so much. Uh, re sorry, review so much move. Uh, Iron Hit is enough from that range, so why not just go for it? Even if it doesn't pick up a KO, Incinero will KO uh, uh, Combo O for me. So. It's a good play uh, by, sorry, the microphone died there. So it's a good play by uh, Matthew there, not revealing the, the rest of the move. Iron Hit and Flab is it's enough to pick up the KO. So we'll see what Hafiz can do in game two. Any adjustment from Hafiz. Uh, and if Matthew can still make a, uh, another good play, amazing play in game one, good read, good prediction. Oh my god. Uh, unfortunately, one of our microphones uh, isn't working, so we will be sharing this microphone here. So, Eru have something to say. Yeah. If Hafiz re really need to think about his strategy, how to outwit Matthew if he wants to turn back the score? Yeah, Matthew, one game up, still undefeated in this entire tournament. Day one, uh, 5 0, and right now 1 0, about to go 2 0. 7-0 in total. So can Matthew go this entire tournament undefeated or is Hafiz the one that is going to stop Matthew? We'll be uh, looking forward to this in game two of their game. So uh, Hafiz might want to be careful, you know, conserving his uh, his combo O instead of switching out like the previous turn. But as you can see, Matthew have Pogon 2 and combo O, uh, sorry, Tapu Koko to threaten his combo O. So, I mean, Incinero is on half his side is really good against uh, Matthew because it threatens the Pogon 2 with a knockoff. Uh, it also intimidates the uh, uh, opposing Incineroar, you know, can take a damage from Tapu Koko and also give it back with a Flabby. So, game 2 of Hafiz and Matthew. Can Hafiz stop Matthew from going Rampage in this entire tournament? So, we'll see Incineroar Katana lead and Matthew will be leading. Well, Matthew and Incineroar and Polygon 2, the same lead from before. Yeah. While the Kartana from Harvest is not in a good position because threatening by the uh, Matthew uh, Incineroar. Yeah, intimidate uh, on both sides of the uh, uh, field, so it actually benefits Matthew because Matthew's uh, Incineroar is now threatening the katana with a flab, super effective flabs, and you also um, drop the attack stat on both Incineroar and katana to minus one. And as we have seen, uh, katana is holding a assault vest; it can't protect from the fake out. So this turn, does Hafiz want to trade fake out? You know, to prevent the pro uh, Pragon two from, uh, you know, setting up trick room to make sure that uh, Matthew will outspeed the katana the next turn. So. Looks like Incinero is going for a protect, not risking the fake uh, fake out speed tie or you know. And there's a fake out block with the protect. Good prediction again from Matthew. Oh my God, Matthew! 
you wouldn't want to play against Matthew in this tournament. He's actually on fire, making all the prediction and good read here, going for a trick room. And now, Incineroar outspeed Katana. Katana likely not holding the focus sash, is still going to uh, fail from this uh, minus one flab is from the opposing Incineroar. So, Hafiz might want to switch on his Katana here to, you know, conserve it for the next few uh, turns. Uh, but Matthew, as you can see, he's making all the nice street and stuff. So he's definitely going to predict this switch in. And there's how he decided to take back Kartana and change it into Tapovini to threaten the Incineroar. Yeah, and also take the flare bits from the opposing uh, Incineroar. And look at that. What did I say? Matthew calling every switch in. Talo both super effective against uh, Tapovini, taking more than half. Oh, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew is really good at predicting the movement of the opponent, the, the switch out, and uh, how to to attack the opponent's weakness is so far so good, unstoppable right now. Yeah, I I actually thought Hafiz would be uh would have already have a game plan against Matthew because Matthew is risking every uh 50 50 plays you know going for the hard read so I thought actually Hafiz would stay in with his katana to take a uh maybe a thunderbolt from the, uh from the Paragon to you know because the switch out was so obvious that Matthew wouldn't want to flap his the katana slot. Yeah, and once again Hafiz uh, in general, knock uh, off just blocked by the protag while Tapu Vini doing the calm mine. Yeah, calm mine boosting special defense is gonna uh, take another thunderbolt from uh, uh, Matthew Spargon too. But Matthew can just go for knock off onto the Tapu Vini to you know not allowing Tapu Vini to regain health for, uh, if he's carrying a pinch berry. So Matthew in a really good position right now. But Matthew's Pokemon still in full uh, uh, green HP, while half his Cedric's Pokemon already in yellow bar. Uh, uh, half his decided to take back the Incineroar to switch in with Como O, while Pokemon to Thunderbolt once again into the Tapu Vini and almost pick up a KO, but still survive and munching its berry to regain some health. Oh man! Wow, Matthew still wants instant rose and flower blitz into Tapovini. It's only cheap damage. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Matthew forgot that Tapovini usually carry a pinch berry right there. So uh, maybe a knockoff onto the uh, Tapovini and Tanabola in Sinner slot is always safer. But now Como O in Misty Terrain, Kangaroo Soul Base is not gonna do as much as it always does. So I mean this turn. Uh, Matthew might want to go for Ice Beam onto the Chroma O to do a lot of damage, a lot of uh, super effective damage against Chroma O before it gets its uh, stat boosted. But uh, I don't think Paragon 2 will fail from the Kangaroo Soul Blaze thanks to the Misty Terrain on, uh, from half his uh, own type of Fini. There, Matty decided to take back the Incineroar and switch into with Tapu Coco to threaten the Tapu Finis from Harvest. And there's we can see the electric search uh, override the Misty search while Como uh, using Protect, while Polygon to use Recover to gain some health back. That is a really good switch in by uh, Matthew right there, but I thought he would go for uh, Electric Terrain Booster Thunderbolt onto the Tapu Fini there, you know, to pick up a KO from there, and then Tapu Coco can threaten the combo all with the Dazzling Gleam, but uh, maybe Matthew don't want Tapu Fini to faint so that Harfis can get a free switch in from, uh, with Incinera to fake out, and then Klangoroso plays the next turn. Uh, Half is it's safe to go for. Uh, it's not safe to go for a Kangaroo Soul Blitz right now because Tapu Koko is gonna outspeed the Komo O and summon the Dazzling Gleam. It's gonna do super effective damage against Komo O. So Komo O is switching out to Incineroar here. Oh, Matthew actually celebrating right there. Did he make a good call again? Yeah, and there's an Intimidate there to uh, uh, make. Uh, uh, Attack drop while Tapu Fini using protect and there's the Thunderbolt into Incineroar and pick up a KO! 
Yeah, Matthew making another good read there, you know, predicting the Como O to switch out into uh, Incinero or Katana, thunderbolting the, uh, the Como O. But, you know, making a risk like that is always not safe uh, because Como O can go for like a C move and should pick up a, a Pogon 2 from that range thanks to the electric terrain, you know, removing the misty terrain. But then again, uh, Tapu Koko isn't really threatened by the opposing combo O unless it carries like something like a poison jab, you know. So now Katana comes back in the field. Uh, as we see, it's a South Vest, so it's gonna take a Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko quite well, you know. Katana might want to go for Secret Swan onto the Progon 2 slot. Uh, and you know, whatever comes in, will not enjoy taking a uh, Secret Swan, especially an Incineroar. Yeah, and there's the Incineroar come back to the field. Well, Tapu Fini is protect, but it's failed. And there's the Thunderbolt once again targeting Tapu Fini, and it's pick up a KO. Now, half his CD already lost two of his team. Now, Kartana attacking. Tapu Koko is critical hit, but still survive. This is why I love Focus Sash Tapu Koko. You, you never fail from anything, even a Titanic Rage from Landorus. <laughs> But thanks to the focus search now, Tapu Koko will have another turn to you go for a dazzling gleam onto the Como O. But will Matthew predict a protect on Como O and protect his own Tapu Koko instead? But this turn he doesn't need to do that because all he needs to do is to fake out the katana and go for a dazzling gleam. And if Como O doesn't protect, he'll frame from this turn. But even if he protect the next turn, Tapu Koko will still outspeed both Katana and Komo O and use Dazzling Gleam again. And Hafiz will have to bank on a uh, double protect right there. So, safe play for Matthew. Fake out onto Katana, Dazzling Gleam onto Komo O there. I don't really see Matthew losing from this game. But Matthew decides to go for a protect there. You know, uh, scouting out the protect on Komo O. Uh, probably Flare Blitz the Katana. There's the leaf blade uh, blocked by the protect while uh, Incineroar used flare blade into Onto the Katana. Katana. Oh! Yeah, it's pick up okay. Oh! What a play by Matthew. And this game seems to be over because all Matthew needs to do is to dazzling gleam and flare blitz onto Como O. Matthew is going 7 0 in this tournament. What a player. Everyone needs to be aware of Matthew right now. You know, be careful of him. He's actually. On fire! Yeah, and there's Komo trying to protect. And there's try to prolong the game a little bit more. Yeah, this, I mean, even if Hafiz is trying to stall the time, he has 1 minute and 24 seconds. It's not gonna be enough. Uh, Komo O, I don't see a way against a single target dazzling gleam. No way he's gonna survive that. Uh, go for a triple protect, yeah. but it fails. Matthew Sele 1 would take. Game uh, round two of uh, day two and going 2 0 in day two, 7 0 oh. in this tournament. What a play by Matthew Silly one yeah. in this round. Congratulations, Matthew. Matthew. Sure. Uh, we will have an interview with Matthew uh, after this. Uh, what, so what do you think about the game? Well, Matthew making all the good reads, uh, prediction, every round, catching the switch in, the protects, uh, something I, I feel that Hafiz should have uh, should have studied in uh, game one. Like, you know, Matthew have already shown that he he will risk the, the move. Like, you know, he will think, oh, you're going to switch in, you're going to protect. So maybe Hafiz can play slightly riskier, you know, not protecting his Pokemon or switching out to catch the the over prediction from uh, Matthew. So uh, what I feel is uh, Harvey should have uh, learned from that game one. Yeah, Matthew really have a big momentum right now. Yeah, we'll be moving on to the interview. Yeah, with the big man of the yeah. tournament, seven zero in day one and day two. Everyone is watching Matthew playing from the audience uh, you know be careful of this player they, they, they'll be like oh I have to be careful of him yeah we are back 
uh, with Matthew Sullivan, 7 0 in the tournament. You know, it's an honor to in, uh, interview you. Congratulations, Matthew. Thank, thank you so much, Ben. Oh, so, uh, Matthew, I was really going crazy when I watched your game, you know, uh, phrasing you every turn because of your good uh, prediction, your reads, you know. Okay, let's talk about your team. Where do you get a team from? Uh, so actually, uh, when I was back in Melbourne, my, uh, one of my friends uh, over there, he won a MSS using a similar team. And then I saw actually your team in my the team? Uh, <laughs> Singapore MSS. Oh. <laughs> I, I believe you won, right? Sorry? I believe you won the uh, yeah, MSS. Yeah, I won a mid-season, but I yeah. have a couple bullet instead. So yeah. why Mega Heracross? Because uh, I noticed that uh, this the team is very very weak to Venusaur yeah so I guess that's an area that I need to improve and I need to take care of the opponent's trick room setter as well so with Mega Heracross it can cover stuff like Mega Venusaur, Among Us and then it can one hit KO uh, trick room setters such as Cresselia yeah, yeah. and Porygon also some uh, Pokemon prominent in the meta such yes. as Tapu Vini provided that it doesn't have a berry yeah, really interesting pick there. It proved to you that it's working because you're a 7-0 in day one and day two. You look really sleepy there. Did you get Thank enough you. rest? Uh, actually, no. I watched the uh, World Cup last night. Oh, we're a really hardworking player we have here. Yeah. So, um, going into this tournament, 2-0 in day two, how are you feeling right now? Uh, nervous, but I want the money. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you just need to win a couple more uh, games and you will be making to the top cut of the day two so I, I wish you luck uh, congratulations so once again you know Matthew Sully won everybody and stay tuned for round three of day two